If you or your folks are at the age where you have to do required minimum distributions and you donate to charities, there is a unique tax strategy here. As long as you do it in the right order, I've got that more coming up. My name is Mike Bernardo, the host of The Wise Money Show, I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. All right, RMDs, QCDs. These are two acronyms. One, you're required to do, that's the R. The other is a choice if you are donating, giving to charity. But not only do you need to understand what both of those are and why they're important to link together, but you also need to make sure you're doing them in the right order. All right, so required minimum distribution. We're, we should all be familiar with this. This is a, a age at which the IRS has said you are required to start pulling some money out of your pre-tax retirement accounts. So as you save up while you're working, you contribute to your 401k pre-tax or to an IRA pre-tax, or maybe your folks did or someone, a family member did and you inherited it. At a certain age, at a certain time point, the IRS says, listen, you've avoided tax on this money for too long, you've got to start withdrawing some of the dollars and report this as income, okay? And so if it's your dollars, then it used to be age 70 and a half that you were required to start taking a little bit out. They moved it to age 72 via the Secure Act 1.0. Now they've moved it to age 73 via Secure Act 2.0. And out there in the future, about eight, nine years from now, it'll be turning age 75. So other than that, it's really simple. But the idea is at that stage, at that, after you reach that age, you can take out as much money as you want. You can withdraw your entire IRA. Just when you do, you've got it, whatever you pull out, you've got to report as income on your tax return. But if you say, well, I actually don't want to take any money out, you're at least required to withdraw a minimum amount. You can do more than this. The M stands for minimum, not maximum. You can do more than this, but you've got to take out at least a minimum amount. And there's a calculation that's done every single year based on the value of your pre-tax retirement account, your IRA or, or 401k, whatever, based on the value as of 1231 of the previous year. And it's divided by a life expectancy uh, factor that determines what your calculation is. So the amount changes every single year. You can withdraw more than that, but you've got to withdraw at least that much, whether you need it or not. So that's RMD, that's required minimum distribution. QCD, qualified charitable distribution. And what that is, is after you turn age 70 and a half, and they've kept it at 70 and a half, even though they've pushed the other dates to 72, 73, soon to be 75 for RMD, the qualified charitable distribution is still 70 and a half. After age, at, at or after age 70 and a half, you can withdraw money directly from your IRA, not a 401k or 403b, it's gotta be an IRA, and send it directly to a nonprofit 501c3 charity of your choice. If you do that, then that money comes out of your IRA, but it does not land on your tax return as taxable income. It gets reported there, but right there in the middle, it doesn't slide over and become taxable income. So this is a better way of making donations to the church or donations to a qualifying charity than you taking the money out of your IRA yourself because then you'd have to report it on your tax return and then donating it to that 501c3, that charity, if you itemize your tax, uh, your, your deductions, then maybe you'd get a deduction for some or most of it there. But if you don't itemize, it's not gonna, it's, it's not going to offset, it's not gonna help you there, okay? So a qualified charitable distribution, done lots of videos on that before, I'm not gonna get into all the nuances, but you're eligible at age 70 and a half, you have to make that, that, that distribution, that, that transfer directly from your IRA, directly to that charity, and if so, that money comes out of your IRA, does not become taxable to you, and the charity gets to use those dollars. So oftentimes, these are used together. Why? Because there is a unique ability that your qualified charitable distribution actually can count towards your required minimum distribution. You'd think, well, this qualified charitable distribution, that's a benefit. If I'm donating to the church or giving money to the church or, or somewhere else, I, I can actually do that and have that money not be taxable. That's fantastic. I bet that required minimum distribution is above and beyond that. No, it's not. No, you can actually use your qualified charitable distributions as part of your RMD. You just want to make sure you get them in the right order. So here's what I mean by that. 
assume, for example, that it's time, you know, to, to do your taxes and it's early in the year and you take a look and you file your taxes and, and obviously you're talking about your required distributions and all that. And so you say, okay, well, what's my required distribution for this year? And because I told you that calculation is based off of the value on 1231, you know what, what your required minimum distribution is on January 2nd or January 3rd, early in the year, you know what your required amount is. So let's say it's, it's tax time, you're doing your taxes and it's March and you say, okay, yeah, well, so how much am I required to take out this next year? Oh, 20 grand, say that's the calculation. All right, let me, let's take that out because I want to make sure I don't forget. And there's a good reason for that. If you do forget to take out your RMD, there's a big penalty, 50%. So a lot of people like to take it early in the year because you know what it is, you can calculate it, and you know it needs to be done and you just make sure you get it done so you don't forget. So there you go. Well, then come the end of the year. Fast forward to the end of the year and you're looking around saying, oh yeah, what, what is, what's the year end giving that we wanna give? If you don't donate to the church weekly or monthly, a lot of people do it right at the end of the year. And if it's not the church, it's other causes, other charities that where you say, hey, it's the end of the year, they're making their annual kind of plea for, hey, uh, we could use your support, thank you very much. And you say, yeah, I'm gonna give a, a total of five grand to these various charities. And you do that and you think, oh yeah, my financial advisor or this individual on the Wise Money Show uh, said I could do a qualified charitable distribution. So let me draw that out from my IRA, I'll send it to these charities and I'm all set. Well, what'd you just do? You took your 20 grand out for your RMD. So that's gonna, that came out of your, your IRA and it's gotta land on your tax return. And then you took another five grand out later in the year and sent it to different charities. Great news is that doesn't land on your tax return. So in that situation, 25 grand came out of your IRA in total, only 20 grand landed on your tax return. Fantastic, right? Well, what if you reverse the order? And this is, not conventional. This is the, you're likely this is going to be uh, difficult to do. It's going to require some proactive planning. What if you resisted the idea to take your required minimum distribution at the beginning of the year? And if you didn't know exactly what causes you were going to donate to at the beginning of the year, no problem. But sometime in the fall, October, November, maybe first part of December, you plan to work with your, you know, talk to your spouse, figure out, okay, what are the causes that we want to donate to? And you figure out what those are and you do that 5,000 of qualified charitable distributions first. And then after that, you say, okay, well, now what do we need to withdraw for our required minimum distribution? Well, that calculation was 20 grand. You already took five grand out for your qualified charitable distributions. So your remaining uh, required minimum distribution is just 15 grand. In that scenario, only 20 grand came out of your IRA, leaving an extra five in, and only 15 of that 20 lands on your tax return. Now, if you needed to withdraw more out for cash flow or whatever, then obviously it, it's, a, it's a moot point. But so many people take their RMD at the beginning of the year and don't really need it. Just, okay, what's my minimum amount that I need to take out? What, I'm re, what am I required to draw? Okay, I'll take that out. And then they do their giving either all throughout the year or later in the year, and they don't connect the two. And I would urge you, we would urge you, do a, take a planning approach, doing proactive tax planning. And I don't, love, I don't love the idea of waiting to the very end of the year to do your RMD. I don't. Something could happen. You could go on vacation. You could have a health issue. Something could come up and you might, you might forget. I prefer to do all of your qualified charitable distributions earlier in the year, maybe spring, maybe right now in the summer, and then take your RMD after that. I don't love the idea of doing your year end giving right at the end of the year and then doing RMD after that because you're just running out of time and, and you don't wanna make a mistake. But what's most important is doing them in the right order. If you're donating to charities, if that's important to you, doing a qualified charitable distribution first and then doing your required minimum distribution after that can save you a significant amount of taxes and be a much better way to manage your tax planning and your giving. Work with your certified financial planner on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, contact one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com. That's corhorn with kwisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well, or send us an email, info at corhorn.com. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.